Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Millie and I love any makeup, especially shiny, shifting, sparkly eyeshadows. And today I'm actually going to be talking about the worst makeup I've tried so far in 2022. I've tried a bunch of products. I do mostly feature eyeshadows on my channel, but I do also have quite a bit of other products to talk about. And these are kind of the worst of the worst. So really just being like really picky with which products really just did not work for me whatsoever. Or if I feel like they're just not worth the money, like I regret buying them. If you don't see a product in this video, then chances are that I did enjoy it enough to not put it in here. Um, so I'm not going to be doing a video on the best products. I think I'm just going to wait until the end of the year and kind of really sum it up just the best of the best, like be really, really, picky but so far it would be really really hard because like all the single eyeshadows really like I really love so far pretty much all of the ones I've tried I can't honestly think of one that I had a really bad time with if I do forget anything and I remember later on a product that I tried then I will leave it down in a pinned comment just in case but I did go through all my Ulta orders I went through my Sephora orders and I just looked at all the things that I did purchase and buy but of course I didn't go through all my emails so anyways let's get right into it I'm first going to be talking about the eyeshadow palettes because I think that's what most of you are interested in and then I'm going to talk about some other eye products and then lots of foundations I have lots of foundations I went on a foundation kick in the last couple of months so I had tried quite a bit definitely um all of these are like newer foundations so jumping right into it I did purchase the little bite size eyeshadow palettes that were in collaboration with Duncan the main thing with these is honestly these are really like chalky and powdery and a lot of these shades are a little bit like on the lighter side like there's like this yellow in this one which was like okay I couldn't really get much pigmentation out of that one and then we have these two like extremely similar matte light light pinky shadows I don't understand why and then this one is all shimmers and this one has like a satin shade in here just not good quality I do want to call out a couple of the shades though because I did do a reel and I kind of use the best shades in the reel so for example some of the shimmers in here do seem like a little bit more dialed up for elf i was actually pretty surprised so in particular the shade right here is actually really beautiful this shade is also a little bit more amped up and this one actually has a little bit of a duochrome to it and then we have another kind of like whitish shade here so it's kind of like did we need all of these i feel like this one might have like a it looks like it has a little bit of a purpley shift when I put it down but I feel like it's not really visible when I'm swatching it and then also this blue is really really beautiful so there's a couple of shades in here but it's just like overall for the price of these because I think they were a little bit more expensive because they were a collaboration don't quote me on that I did buy like the bundle of all three of them they weren't selling them separately I just feel like these left a lot to be desired so I really really hope that elf just works on their matte formula and then includes some of these shimmers in some future palettes because the shimmers some of them pretty decent I would say like not quite indie level, but like better than most like brands at Sephora. Like I'm looking at you Too Faced. <laughs> but let's go on to some more eyeshadow palettes. So next one, I don't think this is going to be a surprise if you've seen my review video on this. And that is both of the actually uh, color block palettes from Huda Beauty. These, I just was so excited about these. I love the packaging and I really enjoy the colors in here. I think that's it's an interesting combination and the shimmers look like they're really, really shiny, right? Like they look like they're really beautiful. They are definitely a little bit prone to hard pan if you really like keep rubbing your finger in there. But even just look at these two purples, like how they're not that different. And then this one that's in a like split pan, like all three of these are pretty similar. The worst part, however, of this palette are definitely the mattes. Some of the mattes are okay, and then the purple matte, the, the dark purple matte is so, so bad. It brings me back to like 2010. Matte eyeshadow formula, honestly, is just so beyond subpar. I can't believe that in 2022, for a $29 palette, we have like a matte eyeshadow like that. Uh, the Water Activate Liner is actually really, really nice, super opaque, easy to use. However, I had a little bit of it, issues of it like accentuating my skin texture. The way it dried down, it just looked very like, almost as if it like contracted and showed my skin texture. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. I definitely have other Water Activate Liners. I mean, there's so many out there at this point that while it is interesting to see it in a more mainstream, still indie brand, but it's available at Sephora, it's just... I don't know. There's plenty of other options out there if you're just interested in the Water Activate liners. And then the Blue Green Color Block Palette. Again, I love, love the colors in here. Super, super fun. Definitely a little bit more user-friendly in terms of color story. The mattes in here just really hit and miss. Some of them are really pigmented and they're decent, but some of them are really, really thin and just they blend away. They don't want to layer 
you think that you're going to deepen up with this shade, oh, forget about it. It's just going to blend away on you. And the shimmers in here, again, just like, this one is kind of like a marble shade, but it's definitely hard panning. And then there's these this other split pan. I just feel like these all look very, very similar. Like, if you put all these on the lid, maybe you could see that there was two different shades on your lid. But otherwise... These were just not worth $29. I would honestly not recommend these like at all. Even if they were on sale, just avoid them. I think you can get similar shades from other brands. Though not the same color story, of course. If it's like the color story that really draws you in, then that's like another story. So then onto the last palette so far that I tried in 2022 that I didn't really like. It really comes down to on what you think is worth it to you. And for me, this palette is not worth $65. And that is the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. Listen, the packaging, beautiful. The color story is actually really fun. Is it like my most favorite pastel color story? I mean, there's a nice variety, but I don't feel like I'm like in love with the color story. I did rearrange the pants if you're wondering why it does not look like the promo pictures. But the shades in here, I just thought were really disappointing. I just feel like I really love, for example, the Metropolis palette from Natasha Denona. And this just really fell short for me. Um, not just the regular mattes, but also the cream to powder, especially the cream to powder. This purple looks pretty, like, it looks like a nice deeper kind of purple, really interesting tone as well. You will not get it to look like this on the lid. Like, even if you put like an opaque white eyeshadow primer all over the lid and then you pack this on with your finger or with like a synthetic packing brush or something, you will not get it to look like this. It is so sheer. And personally, that is just not my preference. I do like pastel eyeshadows. I have a bunch of other pastel eyeshadows, palettes, single eyeshadows from other brands that I much prefer the formulas of. So it's not like, like I know obviously this is a pastel palette, so I know what I was buying, but I was just really disappointed. Let's talk about the shimmers because the shimmers really just put the nail in the coffin for me for this palette because I feel like these shimmers are so subpar. There's a couple of shimmers that are nice such as this teal, this I mean light blue aqua shade and then this pinky shade. Like these are really beautiful. Like if there was more of these kind of shades in here, there's an alleged multi-chrome in here. I believe it was called Illusion and it's so powdery. It has almost no reflect on it and while it looks nice swatched, the moment you put it on it looks even more dull on the lid. It just has zero shine and I just have shades like this from indie brands that are really, really beautiful. I have a nice spectrum of some flakier formulas and some smoother formulas, but regardless, they're really, really beautiful and dimensional and shiny on the lid. The other shades that disappointed me were this shade, which is a dual chrome. It's like a typical pink to blue purple maybe dual chrome is there some purple in here and while it actually looks a little bit shinier on the, my finger now I use this one on the lid and again it was just a bit more on the satin side same with this shade over here again like everything's looking so much more shiny but trust me just watch that video because when I put them on the lid they did not look like that the shade right here is really beautiful but again just like everything just dulled out I did use like a wet primer underneath to really try to get these to pop and it was just like not performing for me I just feel like they felt they felt and the way they performed didn't, like regardless of their intent, they did not feel like quality, like $65 worth of eyeshadow. And also the other thing about this palette was that there's two repeat shades, two or three, three, three repeat shades from their previous palettes. And two of the shades have been in like two or three other palettes at this point. It's just like, can we just get some new shades in here? Like if you're gonna charge $65, like I want something new and exciting and just not the same because then it just feels like they're just trying to get rid of stock. And so they were like, hey, let's make a pastel palette. Hey, let's put Limoncello in here again because it goes with the theme of pastels. Like I, I truly believe that that is exactly the conversations that they had. So anyways, I really do not like this palette whatsoever. If you're enjoying it and you love it, then I'm happy for you because I definitely want everyone to get what they feel like is worth their money. For me, it wasn't. So moving on to some other eye products that are not eyeshadow palettes. The Milk Makeup New Rise Mascara. I believe they discontinued their previous one, the Kush Mascara, because I don't see it anywhere anymore. It looks like this is a replacement. It has like a weird rubbery cover on it. I don't, I don't understand why. <laughs> It's kind of like pointless. I guess it's just to make it look cool because th their previous mascara was all like fancy and it felt really heavy. I did a dedicated video on this mascara and I just do not like it at all. It looks like it's actually kind of like dry down now. It looks like it's really dry. I pretty much haven't used this since I did the video. It flakes, it wears off, it doesn't hold a curl. 
not really a fan of it whatsoever. Just not worth the money. Not something I felt at all was worth keeping. I have a bunch of just like mini mascara sizes or things like mascaras that I don't love in terms of like I wouldn't wear them for all day wear because they don't hold a curl for me. But I do keep some mascaras around if they're just like good enough for like when I'm filming usually. And that one is just like not good enough because that one is going to flake off. And it's just like if I'm filming for most of the day and I have to have my mascara on for most of the day, while I might not necessarily want something hard to remove like a waterproof mascara I want like a mascara that still can hold and not smudge everywhere and so I haven't even been using that one the next mascara I wanted to talk about I actually got in PR from Colourpop it is their lengthening mascara I do also have a dedicated video on that one obviously I was a little bit late to the party with trying that one out but again didn't hold a curl that one flakes off so fast like within probably an hour or two it would just start flaking again not a mascara that I even want to use from when I'm filming just to get through it that one was a toss in the trash right after uh, finishing that review because I knew that I just didn't like it just the flaking was so so bad and so disappointing so and that one is a six dollar mascara so at least if you purchased it and you didn't like it then it wouldn't be too bad of like a waste but regardless it is still money so on to the um it's like a little glitter pill from the new new uh, beauty brand Half Magic Beauty by Donny Davey who is a head makeup artist for the show Euphoria. I have a dedicated video. I tried a bunch of their products and this is one of those and I don't think this is like a horrible product. It's just it's not worth the money. I believe this is like 20 something dollars for some glitter suspended in some like really really liquidy liquid where it has it's not really opaque at all you would have to keep building it and building it and building it if you really want it like to really show the glitter it's very very just like ethereal kind of sprinkle of glitter if you will and I'm just not into that I, for that price I was just really hoping for something that was a little bit more opaque and this is just not it I think this is kind of fun like here and there but like do not pay full price for this because it is just not worth the full price so now I'm going to be moving on to some face products in case you're not interested in hearing me talk about these I didn't do like really any videos on these I have done a couple of dedicated foundation videos these I haven't I was planning on it that I never got around to it honestly like my channel is not really centered around complexion stuff so those videos usually do not perform that well because that's not what people know me for I do want to like sprinkle them in a little bit more here and there because the way I like to do them is show you some close-ups in front of a window lighting so natural lighting so you really get to see how it sits and performs on my skin I don't even know where to start I think I'm just gonna start with the Donessa Myricks Yummy Skin in general so I did try the serum foundation I tried the shade 2G this is basically like putting oil paint on your face I don't know how else to describe it it is definitely full coverage but the way this sits on my skin the moment I squeezed a little bit out on the back of my hand to put on I knew already I was not going to like the way this sits on my skin at this point I kind of know which textures of foundation do work for me and of course then after that it really depends on like how does it wear so I had a feeling that this wasn't going to work for me this just sits really really gross no matter if I set it or anything it also accentuated like skin texture it accentuated some dry patches I didn't know were even like a thing and then this other thing from Dennis and Marks that launched that was like kind of pretty innovative it seemed like nobody really knew how to use it and so I tried it a couple of different ways and like all the ways like there's something about just like stick foundations and anything balm and my skin just like don't go together again I experienced major skin texture accentuation dry patches I didn't know where there just clung to every little piece on my face just really not a fan I really tried to make this one work but it just it just does not it has almost like no coverage basically maybe just like the tiniest tiniest just to even out your complexion but other than that this is just such a fail for me it definitely seems like there's a pattern with Vanessa Myricks and me because I did try her previous foundation as well and I did not like it I do not like her uh concealer either so it just seems like me and Vanessa Myricks complexion things do not get along but I do really enjoy her like eyeshadow and other product type of stuff just not complexion so I think I'm probably going to save my money and not buy any more complexion products from her so speaking of stick foundations this foundation is the Basma foundation stick I got the shade it's the shade uh 037 and packaging and everything is super beautiful this foundation went viral on uh tiktok because it was allegedly being used or it was being used by uh 
I can't remember her name, Kourtney Kardashian. And so she kind of made it go viral and they have a ton of ton of shades and they're kind of like guaranteeing that you're gonna find a shade that matches you. The shade match is definitely pretty good, but this just accentuates everything on my skin. It's kind of wild because I do have a little bit of an oily T-zone, but I do experience a little bit of dehydration around my nose area sometimes. So this was just not good for me. I think if you don't really have any skin texture, then you're going to really enjoy this because it did look really nice in like this area where I have pretty much no issues whatsoever. My skin is pretty much normal everywhere else except for my T-zone. So like everywhere else, it looked pretty nice, but I do feel like it's also, the finish of it is definitely more on the matte satin side, leaning more matte. And that is just not really a finish that I enjoy too much, especially like the way it looked around my nose, on my nose, if you have pores, it fills in your pores, it looks atrocious. Uh, so moving on to the next foundation, I told you there's a lot of foundations. This is kind of like a trial foundation. I do believe that they just kind of uh, launched this at first for people to try out, and that is the Luminous Elixir 3 Drop Foundation from Ritual Defi, I think is how it's pronounced. And I got the shade Galate. I was really excited to try this out. Oh, this is again one of those things the moment I squeeze it out onto the back of my hand, I just knew. <laughs> this is basically oil with some pigment suspended in the oil. I honestly can't see this looking great on any skin because it is just so oily. Like even if you have dry skin, I don't even have dry skin and it accentuated some skin texture and patches on my skin that I didn't know were there. So I can't imagine like this looking great on dry skin either, especially because the way that it just sits on the skin, it doesn't seem to really just kind of like melt in. It just kind of sits on top. It reminds me a little bit of the Good Apple Foundation from um, KBD Beauty because that one also was like really oily. The moment, the moment you touch your face, even if you set it, it, even if you've completely set it like hardcore with a dampened sponge, it will lift. It, this is just so bad. This was literally probably the worst thing I've tried so far. And I feel like I should have known, but you know, like I just, I always just so curious about all these different foundations. Next up, I want to talk about the Kosas foundation. Definitely very, very dewy, like really, really dewy. Even when I set it, it's very, very beautiful. It looks amazing on the skin, but this does not wear for me whatsoever. Within like two hours, even an hour, it will just be sliding off my face, even in spots where I'm not oily. So unfortunately, like this looks really beautiful upon an application and just like a little bit going into it but again like keeping in mind my skin type and whatever you know everyone has different skincare regimen primers etc and just it's really going to just differ so much from everyone and then the next thing I wanted to talk about which oh my god what is happening it's like gone I don't know if it like dried out or if it's just not that full at all and it just like shifted that is really, really weird. I got the shade Fair 3. Um, this is the Turn Up The Base BBB Cream Beauty Blur Balm from One Size Beauty. This is literally the Amazonian Tarte Clay foundation. And you cannot tell me otherwise because it feels gritty. It's super, super moussey. And it is so, so matte. And this is so matte to the point where it looks like a mask, but like my skin looks dry with this and it looks dry everywhere not just my t-zone like i just said i do experience some dry patches on my nose sometimes but this looks just awful all over i don't want to touch this with a 10 foot pole because of the way that it just looks so so bad on my skin and i should have known that even though it's kind of funny because the tarte amazonian clay foundation used to be one of my favorite foundations back when like full coverage was really in but like I can't. The consistency, like I said, it's it's gritty. <laughs> it feels like you're rubbing sand on your face. So really, really dislike this one. On to the last product. This is the Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Subline Perfection Primer. This is not a new product. I did buy this during their like 50% off sale. I was, I was one of the people who had their orders actually shipped out and I was really excited because I did not try this previously. Did I try this previously? No, I've only tried the foundation. Anyway, I heard that this was supposed to make your skin really beautiful, really uh, plump and just primed and ready. And it's supposed to be like dewy or glowy. 
this mattifies my skin so much i have no idea what's going on i don't know if i got like a bad batch or something but this just does not work for me under a uh, foundation because even when i use a glowy foundation on top of it it mattifies it because that's how mad this looks on my skin so i was not a fan because i really don't want to mattify like i just i don't want anything that is extremely mattifying because that just really tends to um, make foundations look the worst on my skin and so those are all the products that i tried in 2022 so far that i I really did not like and I felt like I wasted my money thankfully I don't feel like it's a lot I definitely could have guessed it with some of these foundations I mean the odds of me liking foundations are really like one out of ten so I definitely feel like I need to slow down and kind of just go back to the foundations that I really really love and keep using those but that's the thing is you just always feel like there's something better there's always greener pastures out there but you know it turns out that it's just usually not the case and I think I'm just gonna be sticking to what I have when it comes to uh, foundation for sure eyeshadows have However, I'm going to be buying because I love eyeshadows. I love testing those out, especially from any brands. And actually, if you noticed, no, there's like a mixture of some indie brands in here and some more mainstream brands. I'm really curious to see what products I try in the rest of this year that I don't like. I wonder if it's still going to be as many foundations or maybe it's going to be some eyeshadows in there as well. We'll just have to see. And everything for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel. I would love it if you subscribe. There's so much indie makeup content uploading my channel and much more to come. You don't want to miss out. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.